What up, gang, gang? Papa Keith and this thing is Evan Pernod Monday, of course, where we allow people to talk about their entrepreneurial spirits, some really cool stuff they got going on. My very special guest, introduce yourself. Hey, my name is Taha Abbasi. I am the Chief Technology Officer at Trip Rides, and I'm excited to be here, guys. That's what's up. Follow us right now on Instagram Live and on Facebook Live. Search Papa Keith, P A P A underscore k-e-i-t-h you can join the conversation what are we talking about today we are talking about how ride share needs to be fair for drivers and riders i'm going to talk a lot about that today oh so all you uh uber drivers lyft drivers pay attention log on right now for all the deets on that and we'll be back all right coming up got sweetie my type no goddess chris brown and drake and right now Nice, bro. Yeah. <laughs> You're a pro with this. Hey, we're just, you know, when you got a message, you got to get it out. <laughs> That's just so. Yeah, thanks for having us, too, man. I mean, nah, this is my like, pleasure, man. We like cool stuff like this. Yeah. We really wanted to just kind of get into a whole ethos of the company is have a company that's built by drivers, for mm -hmm. drivers. So t so let's start. Um, first of all, what's the, let's get a little background on you. Sure, sure. So where are you from? I'm from Pakistan originally. I moved here back in 2005. Okay. Um, and since then, I've been in the software industry since before I moved over here. I've done some cool stuff. Got to build some applications for National Geographic Channel. Led a team that actually sent a payload to space with NASA. Worked on the Mars 2020 uh, missions and the Europa missions. And actually, the Velocity wow. rover. Yeah. So, done some cool stuff. Um, and then, I was looking for what I should do with the next, you know, five to ten years of my life. And I came across TRIP. And I'm always a believer that you can't really build something until you've experienced mm. the problems from right. the user shoes. So I actually went out and drove two and a half months so you, full time. So you became like an Uber driver yes, for a little bit. Yes, exactly. That's what's up. And uh, learned a lot about the problems and came on board. And well, you got that little last check, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is a, you, you, you get a shock when you realize some of the problems that are out there and how... No, trust me. I Like, without even knowing, I know because I deal with... Because I have... Uh, I have a couple of restaurants, right? And I and one of the concepts has Uber Eats, mm -hmm. but it's like, like I signed up for a partner that didn't help me with anything else, right? Right. They just have a high percentage of my, you know, income, and then you get sold on like how you wouldn't be getting this business without them, right? And right. all these different things, but um, it's just tough because once you get started, it's like taking your hand out that lion's mouth, like it's wonder. like coming from a position of. Um, almost leverage is where they come from yeah, rather than a position yeah. of partnership. You said it perfectly. Right. And and our whole ethos, airports are upset too. So we go to airports and we say, hey, what are your problems? How can we build software solutions into your airport to help solve them? So why is it a problem for the airport? Airports are having problems with congestion. So a rider Traffic, lands yeah. and they request a ride right from the plane. And they're not really Uber and Lyft haven't really been that helpful in giving solutions to them about how they can do a queuing system and whatnot. We're going to the airports and saying, we can provide you full transparency. In fact, we can integrate our app directly into the airport and do a lot of cool stuff. You can potentially order a ride right from the screen in the airplane. And there's a lot of interesting stuff that we can do because we're coming from a position of partnership. Same with drivers. There's many uh, driver groups in different areas. And the stance typically with rideshare companies has been to sort of company against drivers. Yeah. We're going to these drivers and saying, hey, tell us what your problems are. And we'll actually build features and solutions and policies that solve those problems. And so why hasn't other rideshare companies done what you're proposing to do? It's just the typical business model. How many companies do that? A lot, it, it, you know, you come out, it, starting a business as you know. Especially, well, it's a threat. Yeah, I mean, it's, of course, but they're not afraid right now. You know, they lost $5 billion last year. And one of the, uh, sorry, last quarter, one of the things that you got to understand, you got to have $5 billion to lose it. So they've got tons so, of cash. So if you think, if, so if they lost $5 billion, you don't think they're going to be like, hey, we got to refigure some things right now? Of course. And they're trying. But 10 years, driver, you see every other day there's something coming out about drivers not feeling like they have a say in things, even with the whole AB5 thing that's going around. What is that? Explain it. So basically, drivers want to be classified um, in a way that they can unionize, they can fight for their rights, they can fight for what fares, what rates should be set in different areas. We're coming out and saying, guess what? We're not even going to set fares and rates in different markets. We're going to let you kind of like Airbnb. We're going to allow you to have your own book of business. We're going to tell you what the data suggests that in South Florida, this is the recommended rate. But you have the choice as a business owner to say, I want to set this rate. So why do you think it is that Uber 
does this kind of, I guess, bullying, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Like they just have their own way with the industry like this. Well, they got the power to do it, and it's it's kind of like uh, it's advantageous for them to do so, right? And for us, uh-huh. our, our whole they, – they've given us a platform where there's all these problems of income and solve them now. So I don't think they come out to be sort of the bully, but uh-huh. they have the uh, – they're in a position of privilege to be able to have this market share and do whatever they want. So with Lyft, was Lyft any kind of dent on the issues people were having with Uber? Overall, from a driver's perspective, too, Lyft was a breath of fresh air for a while. Allowing them to have tipping. Right, right. And then, but over time, as it scaled, it went into the same thing. And to be honest, if we don't do things differently, we will be the same way. That's why from the beginning, my emphasis has been that we have to do the harder but the right paths by involving drivers from the beginning. So let's talk about Trip App now. Sure. Um, why did you decide to do this? So it's, again, it comes back to understanding from the application standpoint. But you're so smart. You could have really dove into a lot of different things, a lot of things that you can, uh, you know, you can make convenient for people. Why specifically this? Is there's In different times, there's opportunities that you can look at making a difference. For us, we wanted to make sure that this new wave of the sharing economy is coming out. If someone doesn't step in and do it ethically, then you're going to have monster companies essentially coming out and dictating what happens. And so that's where Bob McNulty, our CEO, sort of founded the vision, and then he brought on the right team, including myself, David Mata, and some of the other folks, to say, hey, we got to put a correct impact, an ethical way of doing the sharing economy, right? Got you. And it's, it's, yeah, you could do many other things, but this is something worthwhile doing. And we're also, part of this is we're enabling people to be business owners in the local market. So when drivers sign up in South Florida, those are businesses being open in South Florida. The money that goes from riders to drivers goes from the rider's credit card into the driver's merchant account in South Florida. Got you. So that's a big difference with us compared to with every other rideshare company. The money goes from South Florida to wherever their headquarters is, right. and then they pay drivers out. Got we you. set up, if I sign a driver signs up over here, we set up your merchant account, everything over here. So you, you have your own account, and that's, that's really powerful, keeping the money in the community. All right, so explain to me more of the business plan of, what makes um, a trip app better? Sure, sure. I think it starts off from the driver's perspective. We're a driver-first company because we believe if you treat, treat drivers correctly, they will provide a better experience to riders. So it starts off with the monetary issue first. We give 100% of the ride fare to drivers straight off, right? So that includes miles, uh, the distance and time, miles, minutes, tips, wait time, cancellation fee, all of that they get up front. On top of that, um, we charge a flat booking fee, which is how we fund rider rewards. We actually reward riders, mm-hmm. and we also have generate our operating revenue. So that's a dollar ninety five booking fee flat throughout. Any taxes and fees that need to be paid, we actually show the driver and rider what that amount is, and that goes directly to the government entities. So all of it is extremely transparent. Which in Uber and Lyft, app being a driver, it's really hard to get to where the money is going. Right. Um, and finally, how do you get access to use our software? You can sign up for a subscription plan at eighty bucks a month at 140 a month or 200 a month, depending on how much you drive. And at each level, we continue to talk with our drivers in different markets to understand what is the correct pricing, what is a reasonable plan so that they can make a lot of uh, money doing what they do on a regular basis. How easy or difficult is it going to be to jump into the market and get even half the recognition or, you know, market share, um, you know, with people just kind of, like with those other two brands jumping out there with so you know so far ahead of you in, right. the, in the game. Yeah, I think it's it's a it's definitely a tough job. It's an uphill battle, but we've been blessed to have the community and the value proposition that we're coming with. If you've got a problem, there's two ways you can solve a problem. You can either come with a vitamin that makes people feel nice, it's a nice to have, or you can come with a painkiller. There's a lot of pain out there, and we believe our problem is a painkiller, which is why we when I came on board on first of March, we had 24,000 users. Gotcha. By end of June, we had about 65,000. Today, we have over 87,000, adding about 600 a day. Wow. And this is without any ad spend right now. So wow. we're, we're definitely gaining traction just from a perspective of doing the right thing. And we're right. going to continue to do the right thing, and hopefully that's what gets us the market share. Wow, okay. So you seem like very focused and determined and, and everything to make sure that this is out there and getting its uh, fair market share as well and putting a dent into some uh, ride-sharing services that are not doing right by the drivers. Yeah, we're going to stay committed, man, to, to doing the right thing by the drivers because there, there's just it's one thing to talk the talk. 
And we're open about admitting our mistakes. If you see some of the YouTube interviews I've done too, we've made some mistakes. But it's very rare a company comes out and says, guess what, we're listening to you. And we're understanding the concerns that you're saying, our users, right, our drivers, and then we're going to go make a change. So we are, I'm very open as the chief technology officer of the company, the entire leadership, the management team. We, I, I'm, I still drive. There's a requirement in our company for you to go out and drive on a regular basis. You to can understand. know the experience. That exactly. Got you. So is the service up and running right now here in South Florida? So in Florida, we are doing event-based rides right now. We launched on 18th of March with event-based rides. So what that means is at different events, we're actually giving away free rides with a coupon. Again, to make sure that our drivers, when they come on board, right now we're not charging anybody a subscription fee because we want to make sure we have 24-7 demand before drivers have to pay anything. Again, doing right by drivers. We have a subscription plan, right. but you don't pay anything until you can make enough money to pay for it, basically. Um, so event-based rides are happening right now. We announce it all the time on our Facebook pages and our email list, and we can also send you some information about that if you like to share with your audience. Please yeah. do. How many drivers uh, do you have now, and how many do you project over the next six months to a year so we've already had over 1200 drivers come on board in just south florida um most of them about 400 of them have gone through our background check process ready to drive and we expect by end of october to be at 5,000, and end of november to be at 10,000, and december to be at 20,000 drivers on board in just the entire florida market and some of the other markets that we're going to open at that time in parallel as well how do you plan to market for these uh drivers to know that you're around what you're doing and to get connected well, we have a phenomenal referral program where we actually incentivize drivers to share the app with other drivers because there's a way to make their subscription free. Kind of like what Dropbox did. You know, if yeah. you share it a few times, you get free months of Dropbox plans. So we're doing the same thing. Uh, if you share it with a certain amount of drivers, you actually don't have to pay your subscription fee. Uh, for the riders, it's actually a really powerful plan where we have a referral program for them too. If you share an app for, with a rider, anytime they take a ride, you get 40 cents. Anytime you take a ride yourself, you get 10 cents in rewards. So that's a really powerful program. If you just have 10 friends that you shared with, for example, that go to work every day, five days a week, you get $160 a month in ride rewards. So super powerful. <laughs> so is there a special reason why uh, you guys uh, decided to spell trip that way? Yeah, I think it's just uh, primarily what's available. <laughs> you know, it comes down in business and it's putting a cool spin on it. Again, it asks, it brings up questions like this, which starts a conversation. Right. I mean, um, well, the other company did something, you know, kind of similar. Lyft did something exactly right. similar. Yeah. So, but uh, when you look at it, it's like try. Maybe you're gonna play, do a play off of the word try. Right. Uh, when you when you launch this and stuff like that, that'll probably make sense. Yeah. Try harder. Try to be better. And right. you know, that's our whole ethos. Is we continue. You know, we this is our motto. Is we every day we try to be better, right? Because we're not perfect and we're not going to be. But we're open to admitting our mistakes. We're open to adjusting our policies and procedures because we want to have drivers part of that decision-making process no matter where we go. That's what's up. So um, it sounds major, like even the stuff you were talking about earlier with the airport and, into, and that integration and working as partners with different um, you know, agencies and the drivers and stuff right. like that. I think um, that's the direction that people really want to get into and – it was a good fit also for the show because it's Urban Panor Monday. So we, you know, try to speak to entrepreneurs and to people who are looking to become entrepreneurs. And this, you know, this kind of goes in that direction. So what does it mean to be a better entrepreneur? What, is, right. you know, what does it mean to now, you know, to, to make a better choice in your, you know, in your entrepreneurial spirit? Exactly. So, um... This is good stuff, good information, man. Thank you so much. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, is the uh, app available for download right yep, now? Yep, you can actually go to the App Store, search for Trip Rides. You can download the Rider Spell app. Spell out for my audience. T-R-Y-P space R-I-D-E-S. Um, you can download the uh, Rider app or the Driver app from both the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. You can also go to T-R-Y-P R-I-D-E-S triprides.com and get all the information over there as well. Where are you based out of? We're based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, mm. uh, but obviously being a national company, so we're launching in South Florida. We're going to go to Orlando next, then New Orleans, Atlanta, and some exciting announcements coming up about a few special markets soon as well. All right. Well, listen, we're excited for you, and we're going to pay attention and, um, and watch it grow. It's yeah, good, absolutely. Know? For real. So it's Trip Ride. Trip Rides. Trip Rides. All right, yep. got you. That's cool. Are you going to be uh, favorable for Teslas and all those other vehicles in terms of because i remember a lot of them didn't start off you couldn't use a tesla right right yeah and now they switched it now so our our regulations are pretty we're, we position ourselves as a software provider we don't tell you what to do with your business 
Gotcha. We're enabling people and communities to be business owners via the software provider. So as oh, long so as the law allows it, you can do whatever you want as long gotcha. as the law allows it, right? So pretty that's cool. the powerful thing about us. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Well, thank you again, man. This was some great information. Let everybody know once again where they can find you, where they can, um, your website, get more information. Absolutely. If you want to find out about a better way to drive, you want to go to T-R-Y-P-R-I-D-E-S.com, triprice.com. Or you can search the Apple App Store for Trip Rice, T-R-Y-P-R-I-D-E-S, or the Google Play Store as well. Also, another cool thing is if you download the Miami Dolphins app, if you're a fan of the Miami Dolphins, right inside the app you have our official partnership with the Miami Dolphins that we have. You know, the Super Bowl is going to happen yeah. over there too. Mm -hmm. So you can get to our app from within the Miami Dolphins app oh, as well. Oh, cool. Congratulations so some on cool that. some cool stuff with them too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, man. Sounds great, man. Thanks again. Absolutely. Thank you for Appreciate having me. Appreciate it. Of yeah. course, man. My pleasure. Thank you.